everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. In today's session, we are here with Joe Reardon, who's going to be showing us how to illuminate our photos using Topaz and Luminosity Mask. He's going to be demonstrating his creative workflow and how he interprets the captured light in his photographs. With the aid of luminosity masking in Tony Kuiper's Luminosity Actions panel, Joe is going to be showing how he uses Topaz Adjust, black and white effects, clarity, and more to illuminate his images. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Joe. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so let me show my screen here. So these are the three images that I'm going to be uh, working with today. And I'll show you the before and the after on all three. So we've got this one that you've seen in the uh, introduction, which is the uh, Tetons at Schwabiger's Landing that everybody uh, has ever been out west is familiar with. Sorry. And this is the before of this image, which we'll create this afternoon. Uh, this is a, a photo from Yellowstone up at the uh, Mammoth uh, area. And this is the after, or maybe excuse me, the before. And this is a landmark in Boston at the uh, Fort, uh, Fort Warren. Let me show you the before. This is what we start with. Now, I've already uh, started these images and did all of my editing in the Lightroom. I just go in and I just do some basic tweaking in there to adjust for contrast brightness, uh, play with the white levels, and uh, obviously put in camera profiles as well to correct for that. So what we're going to be talking about today is luminosity mask and why do we use them. So luminosity masking is a, a bit different than a standard mask where you're familiar with that uh, the standard masks are black or white, where white reveals and black conceals. These are specifically made from the luminance values in an image, and they're and thus they're completely self-feathering as opposed to a black or a white mask that has a clear delineation transition line. These transition into the image seamlessly so you don't see any of that hard edge transition. Um, the luminary mask allow the user to select uh, very specific tonal ranges in an image from the various luminosity masks that are created to make the adjustments as the user sees fit, whether that is through the use of curves, levels, contrast, brightness, saturation, or any other adjustment that is available within Photoshop and by loading luminosity masks directly into top the Topaz plugins and making your image adjustments from within Topaz. Uh, hopefully within this uh, presentation we'll show you several of the techniques of crafting your images through the use of selective luminosity masks with uh, Topaz with uh, Photoshop. Uh, in its simplest terms, it is through the use of layers, selections, and masks that we can make tonal adjustments to target specific areas of an image to bring out the vision of what you saw when you captured that image. Um, presenting Tony Kuiper's action panel that will allow you to create the luminosity mass with the push of a button so that with, they are available to use as needed to craft your image. Uh, a bit about Tony, Tony invented this process of luminosity masking and uh, he's the guru. If you Google luminosity mask, his name comes up very first. Um, so Tony's been doing this for a long time. So within Tony's action panel, we'll also be able to, with the push of a button, be able to load luminosity selections directly to your image, change blending modes as needed, all while crafting your Im in image in a very non-destructive workflow. And that's very key is the non-destructive workflow. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with actions, they are simply a series of Photoshop commands to perform a function that are recorded for later use. Tony has placed these actions in his TK Actions panel, as he calls them, in a very user-friendly interface so that you don't have to create and then drill down into a library of actions to find the right one to use. So let's begin. Uh, as you noticed um, on my screen here, I've opened this image up as a smart object, or as we have here in New Hampshire say, wicked smart object. So I always use smart objects and smart filters so that if there's a change that needs to be done to the photo after the fact, they can go back in and as in a non-destructive manner, tweak whatever needs to be tweaked. Uh, Topaz also supports 
uh, smart filters, smart objects, so that if after you've made an adjustment, you can always go back in and readjust it without affecting the base image. So we will begin. My go-to always, always, always is Topaz Adjust. I begin the process with this, and as you know, Topaz, is, uh, it remembers the last commands that you put in, so reset is always pro the first thing we do. I sometimes use the presets depending on the image, but what I like to do for the most part is just tweak a little bit uh, 26, 27, 28 for the adaptive exposure in the region somewhere 14, 15, 16. Then I'm going to drop the contrast down um, because we'll be adding contrast in through the Photoshop actions and through the process. So I like to come into Photoshop with a fairly flat image. Press OK. So we have uh, our base image of with the smart filter and Topaz Adjust, and as I've shown you here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is in Tony's and this is his action panel. Let's describe just a little bit of what we've got here before we begin. Uh, it's a two two tabbed. And on this section here, we can create all of the masks to, in the channels, whether they be lights, light lights, bright lights, super lights. And, and we'll show you exactly what these do once the images of these masks are made. And down here, we've got a triple play, which we'll use in a, in a later image. Over here, he's got on the other panel a uh, method to create the actions or the the, the luminosity mask by the push of button here, here, or here, uh, and delete them through these. And you can also make luminosity uh, masks through the red, the blue, the green, the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, all of these uh, different colors. And you can select them so that they just load into the image by the press of one of these buttons. Uh, you can change your blend mode, normal screen, soft light, lum luminosity, multiply, overlay, and he's got a selection of curves, levels, hue saturation, all of the normal Photoshop uh, actions that you can do. Um, we may or may not co cover this today, but he also has the ability to do zone mass. So those of you familiar with the zone system, the adjustments can be made through luminosity mass that emulate or simulate the zone system. You can do subtractive mass by subtracting some lights and some darks, or different lights and different darks, to create a customized luminosity mask, uh, depending on the image. Uh, saturation, hue, saturation layers in the channels, and burn dodge layers, Orton lights, de detailed darks, saturation painting we will be using for sure today, uh, the make it glow possibly, uh, and the color color clone and clear channels and web sharpening for output to the web. So we will begin on this side of the tabs and we're going to create all of the masks associated with this particular image. It takes just a minute. Uh, as it, instead of doing this by hand, um, literally by the push of a button, it's done. Well, I will hide this when this is all finished so we can have uh, room to work here. Now, you notice that everything is created in the channels panel. And the reason it's in the channels panel is so that you can use and reuse and reuse and reuse these these masks over and over again as opposed to having them in the uh, layers panel. So we'll hide this. So basically to show you what this does and how it works, we'll select one. So now you can see that this mask is basically self-feathering. It's looking at just the lights, the light lights, the bright lights. And as I go deeper into the lights, it's just picking up the very highest lights. In the, and then we've got a, a special mask here, mid-tones, a quarter light. And now on the opposite end, we've got darks. And it's going to select just the darks, the darker darks, the shadow darks, the super darks, Ultra darks, midtone, three quarter, and one of my favorites always is the basic midtones, expanded midtones, wide midtones, super midtones, and ultra midtones. And we'll be using a good portion of these masks to craft this particular image and the other two that I showed you. So I typically like to start with the, the lights, just my workflow. You can start with darks or midtones, whatever you like. Uh, my workflow. So I want to affect 
this bright area here. These clouds are a little bit too bright for me, so I want to attract those and bring them down just a little bit. So I'm going to pick super lights, and I will turn this uh, action panel over, and then using this, we will just press the button, and it creates that mask, or it loads that mask, and it associates a curve with it. Now I can come in, and as you can see, it's just the bell curve, or Gaussian curve here, of just the super lights here, and I can make a significant change here, and it's only going to affect, as you watch me go up and down with this, just those clouds, as you see right here, uh, until I get them to the uh, look I like. I'll hide this, and what I want to show you here is if I press the shift key and the mask key, if you used a normal curves to try to make your adjustment, you can see how much this is going to grossly overcook this uh, particular image here. So that's the basis of using luminosity mask that you can come in and selectively pick out the areas that you want and don't want to be affected. So next, I will probably work with the darks. Uh, since I know this one very well, I'm going to pick this one here, and it's going to affect just this area here. I may even go a little further in just the ultra darks here, so I'm just affecting the forestry region here, and as you can see, everything else is not going to be affected up here. So again, we'll come back over to the ultra darks. To select curves, uh, I particularly like curves. I'm just familiar with them, but you could use levels, whatever your preference is. And again, we'll double click and we'll open up the darks just a little to get a look that I like for this particular image. Not too, too much. Again, and then I'm going to come to my favorite, which is the basic mid tones. We're going to add a little bit of contrast back into this. So it's going to affect quite a bit of the photo, but not all of it. So we'll come back up, uh, and pick basic midtones, and this is where I'm going to put a little bit of an S curve in this, and it's going to generate this uh, basic midtone mask along with a curve. And then again, just a little bit of a S curve here, and you can see the effect pretty quickly as I go up and down. So I like this look at this point. So close this. Now I'm going to do a stamp, and this is where we're going to bring it into Topaz. So by holding the Shift, Control, Alt, E, I'm a PC guy, so I don't know the Mac, but I think it's Option. And again, it brings up a completely copied layer of everything that's below uh, all of the adjustments that I've made so far. Again, convert to Smart Filters. Because mistakes happen, and you can always go back. Lessons learned from too many mistakes in the way learning. It does take, unfortunately, because of the size of the file, uh, um, a few seconds longer than normal. So we've got layer one again, um, and I'm going to call this clarity. Let me spell it works well. All right. So what I want to do within Clarity, since it's a um, smart filter, do I want to affect all of it or parts of it? So I think I want to load in one of these midtone masks. So I will control click on the mask, go back up to the full layer. You can see the marching ants. So what you see in the marching ants is what's going to be affected in the image. I'm going to hide these, control H. They're hidden, but they're still there, and we're going to bring this into Topaz Clarity. And allow this to come to screen. And here we go. And as we know, the Topaz um, it's sticky, so it remembers the last. So the first thing I always do is hit reset. So this is a loaded in exactly as we just saw. Now, this particular image, I like the clouds and what it does with the clouds. So I will pick the preset that brings out the best with the cloud. And I happen to like this one a lot. Um, I may tweak down the blacks just a little bit. 
a little too dark and I may bring the contrast out back in just a little bit so you can customize this any which way you like uh, again uh, the whites maybe just bring them back down just a little bit good I like the way it looks I'm gonna press OK and it'll come back out and now keep in mind that this is going to be filtered by the mask that I loaded earlier so it's not going to have the overall effect that this is going to be somewhat muted so due to the uh, mask being loaded ahead of time so you can go a little bit more extreme with uh, your adjustments here now this is not so bad uh, I like to look if you want to adjust this you can paint on the mask or you can turn the density down just a little bit to get a little bit better look of what you like here I like this not at 100% but it looks nice All right so we're going to now go back out of topaz and we're going to make some adjustments for burning dodging and saturation painting so we'll go back to Tony's action panel here so what we're going to do is customize a little bit of work right down through here. As I recall the day that I was there, these aspirins were popping. And I'm not seeing popping here yet. And I, we will go right down to Burn Dodge. And I'm going to lighten up just a little bit in some of the areas. So the Burn Dodge, dodging layer, white paint. Over here. And we will on the overlay mode commit and just open this up just a little bit make sure I'm looking very low opacity down and tweak till you like what you see obviously in this demo I'm going to be fairly quick um, this was hanging in the gallery I would be spending days on this it will give you the good flavor of what this can do for you. I, I happen to like this a little bit, and I want the mountains to be a little bit darker. So we change this to a black brush. We keep the opacity the same. Now you'll see that it's it's going to paint a black with a soft brush. So we're going to paint a little bit here, make these come in just a little bit more to emphasize the mountains against the nice sky that's there not too too much looking good I may go over it just a little bit more just for a little bit more emphasis and again be careful how you're painting so you're outside the lines good now one last we're going to do a little bit of saturation painting specifically on the aspens themselves so we're going to create a saturation painting layer. And what this is going to do for you, it's going to create a blank layer. And you notice that the blend mode is in saturation. So you've got uh, a red or gray. If you use red, it's going to increase the saturation. If you use gray, it's going to desaturate it. So I like what I see here, but maybe I just want to keep it to just these areas here. So as I recall, we were using super docs so I'm going to load this mask by control clicking it back up here as you can see the marching ants again will hide them control H to hide them control H to hide them there we go and I'll keep a very low opacity and it's going to constrain my saturation painting to within what I've selected on that mask and you can see we're just affecting these nice aspens that were in perfect color the day I was there. Again, just a little bit of saturation to draw your eye to it and crafting your image here. We'll, a little bit we'll pick up through here. We'll deselect by Control D. And now we're going to stamp it once more. I click up here, Shift Control Alt. E and it creates a new layer and as you'll see I'll keep converting these to smart filters always Topaz is one of the very few filter um, 
filters will allow in you to use smart filters. So if you do make a mistake and you do go a little heavy-handed or a little underhanded in your adjustment, you can go back and very quickly make a new adjustment to it to increase or decrease what you need. So what I want to do here is, is I want to bring a little bit of darkness into the sky with the use of a graduated filter, and I'm also going to change this so it has a little bit of a silverish top. So we will use lens effect. One of my favorite. Again, reset all. And we're going to first we're going to put the silver top. You can see a small change there. But the look I like. Press apply because we're going to be doing another one. Once that is done, we'll get a message on the screen here that says it's okay. There we go. And now I'm going to come in and do a graduated neutral density. And we're going to do top half, and one stop. And I think that may be a little much. You know, so I'm going to tweak this down just a little bit, maybe a, a half a stop, wrong direction. I get I look the look I like. And as you'll see in a second, very quickly you can change this into a very customized look that is very pleasing to you and how you want to craft your image. Um, obviously with the constraint of time here, I would spend hours and hours and hours more on this, but I think you can see that with the, the use of both uh, Tony's actions and Topaz, then you can craft a very, very nice image um, to your liking and to your customer's liking, hopefully. So we're going to close this out and not save it, and we'll go on to the next image. Um, obviously, at the end, we'll take some questions. I typically don't flatten. I would make a copy and then flatten the copy before printing, but uh, this particular one, we won't flatten. We won't even save. So we've got our Lightroom here. We'll pick on another image. And this is going to be the black and white one. So we'll go into black and white effects. Again, we can edit directly into a smart object. It will follow the same process, but we'll use black and white effects instead of adjust. Um, and we'll make specific adjustments to this for this particular image to craft it the way I like it and the way it, uh, I want my customers to see it. So we begin, we'll set this back to black and white. We've got the, a smart filter, smart object, and we will come in and make our first adjustment through Topaz Labs black and white effects. I absolutely love this program. I did a lot of beta testing for Topaz with this and uh, very, very happy with the end result. Again, sorry for the buff and large files, but uh, you pay the price for 36 megapixels sometimes. There we go. So again, reset. Now, what do we want this to look like? Do we want this to look like the Platinum series for a lot um, of the old time photographers would use? Um, I don't think that works well here. I'm going to go with a traditional collection. Uh, normally, you would just go up and down, depending on what you want to see for a final look. I want to use the uh, traditional collection. And we're going to check out what we can see here of using these adjustments to hue, saturation, and filtration here. Do I get a look that I like? I kind of like this one. So we'll stop there. And then in the adaptive, um, We'll tweak a little bit on the boosting the blacks because I want just a little bit more separation between the, the white, as you see here, um, in the field of uh, white there. We'll tweak the whites down just a little bit. We're going to come into adaptive. I like around 30. And again, the region somewhere around 14, 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood, just to take a little bit of the highlights out process the details separately. That didn't quite give me the look I wanted. Let me change this hue and saturation just a little. 
All right. Now on the color sensitivity, I'm going to come down. I know that uh, I want to drop this blue down to make this a little bit darker in the sky. As you can see up in the top left, it's in the cyan as well. Give it a little bit more. Take that color out of it. Yellow. And perhaps the red. I almost want this to look like it's a uh, infrared photograph just because of the starkness. So this is about what we'll do on Topaz side right now. We'll bring it into luminosity and we'll make some adjustments there. Then back into Topaz to make some final tweaks to this. There we go. So now we've converted it. Now I'm going to create my luminosity mass. Again, all channels. Because I don't know which one is going to be the best one for this particular one. Once you get used to it, uh, you may just select to use either darks or lights, depending on the image, and you may go right to the one you need right away. It all depends on your experience level with these and how used you are to these masks. So, bright lights, nope. Um, actually, I think I want bright lights. I like the way that looks, and I'm going to turn this, tone this down, all of the whites that you see left over here. So, again, we'll come up to the action panel, and I'm going to pick curves. And as you know, you can make significantly hard adjustments to this. And I don't want to make it so flat that it loses it. So we'll come down. And again, I'm going to show you that by hitting the shift, you can see the difference between before and after using this mask. Had you used without the mask, this is what it would look like with the mask, a little bit less. So we're going to go to, there's not much in the way of darks here, but we will try super, which is going to bring me a little bit of the tree. Let's see what the altar looks like. Uh, just the tree. So I think I'm going to go with just the tree ultra darks. We will select again, ultra darks. Allow that curves layer to be uh, attached to the mask. And I will open this up just a little bit so that it's only going to affect just the darks. If I grow a gross amount, you can see that it's only affecting the darks, but I want to balance this out so it's just where I want it. I end up uh, right about here. Now, we're going to go back to my, my all-time favorite, which is the basic mid-tones. For this particular image, I like it. I've already practiced with this, so we're just going to select basic mid-tones, allow the mask to be created with the curves adjustment to it. And again, I'm going to come in here with this and just make some basic S-curve adjustments, maybe a little bit heavy-handed on this one because I like the contrast that it's adding into this particular image. Uh, a little darker. I like this. So from here, stamp it. And we have a complete duplicate of this particular layer. Convert for smart filters. It's good to have a, a pretty good idea of what you're going to um, need for this particular photograph or your particular photograph. No two photographs are going to be alike and no two are going to have the exact same um, technique or workflow to it. But have a pretty good idea once you get used to what Topaz can do and what you get used to what the Tony's action, actions can do, you'll have a good idea of which which filters you need to use and which uh, masks you need to use to make the adjustments you need. So I'm going to bring this into clarity. Um, and this time I'm going to not put a mask on it just to show you that you can have an overall effect without a mask and then come back in and brush out. So we've got the image. We'll reset it. and. 
I actually like the landscape presets. As you can see, it's bringing a little. Oh, I've got a dust spot I should have fixed. Um, disregard that. I like this on the landscape pop three. I may make a little bit of adjustment here under low contrast. Bring it back down again. Yeah. It was a little harsh, so we'll add that back. And then the high contrast, bring it up black level, a little bit more towards zero. And nah, I like this adjustment. So we'll press OK. So at this point, I'm very happy with what we've achieved with clarity here. And now I want to come in and darken some specific areas with the uh, burn dodge layers, um, and I want to open up some areas that uh, need to be opened up. And we'll come back in at the end because there's this uh, to black and white effects in Topaz because I do want to add a, a vignette to this. So in here, we're going to come back into Tony's actions, and we're going to use the burn dodge layers. My goal is to give you a real good flavor of what what Tony's actions can do with uh, in the combination of top, topaz, um, can't show you everything in the time constraint, but we'll give you a good idea of what's going on here. So I'm going to dodge. So I want white paint, and I want overlay. So we're going to come in and open this up. My opacity is about 10%. I'm going to open this up just a little bit so you can see some of the details within the tree. A little bit here, a little bit here just so you get a feeling for it. Perhaps a little bit in here. And again a little bit here. All right, so we're going to go now to the burning. Switch over to the black. And we are in soft light. I'll change this to soft light. Now I'm going to change the size of the brush. Make it a bit bare. I want a lot of this to be darkened down. It's a little too hot, so we'll darken it down just a bit. Not too, too much. And these mountains that are off in the distance, for sure, blacken these up so we get a little bit of separation. And then background over here as well. Very happy with this. We're going to stamp it one more time. Shift, Control, Alt, E. And I'm going to bring this back into black and white effects. Again, convert for smart filters. We've got what we want. I apologize for the little smudge. I must have cleaned my... Uh, filter a little bit. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, you can't do it at this point. It would change all of your um, edits. It should have been done right at the beginning. I should have, I should have done this and should have mentioned that. Clean it up first. As you can see, it's getting a pretty big file. We're up to over 2 gig, unfortunately. This large files, large filters, large files. And as soon as this stops turning, we'll go bring this right back into black and white effects. And I'm just going to add in a vignette around the bottom. I like the vignette from black and white effects more than the other programs. Personal choice, personal taste. fast computer but it takes some time so we're just going to put this back to neutral we'll come back into finishing touches we'll come back into vignette and you can see that it is darkening it a little bit too much but there I like that size maybe a little bit darker kind of draws your eyes to it 
and then just press OK. A little dark. We will add a curves. Open it up just a hair. Good there. So I think we're complete with this photo for the uh, demonstration purposes. Just to give you a real good flavor of what you can and cannot do with uh, both the two Topaz and Luminosity. Again, we won't save it. And we'll bring you to the final image that I've got prepared for you. So as you can see, it, it brings it in with the smart object. We're going to spend a little bit more time on this particular one. Um, and I'm going to add in a new twist to this that I haven't um, done yet on any of the other images. I talked about it at the beginning. And this, the actions that Tony uses is called the triple play. And I'll go over that and what that does um, in general terms. Uh, it's very deep. As Tony has got a document that's close to 40 pages long that describes it. I'll give you the best I can and a quick overview of how it works, but more, more importantly, how I'll show you how it works. So we're going to come into this one and again, adjust, adjust, adjust. It's my go-to always, always. I think it's one of the best programs that Topaz has, at least it's my favorite. It sets the tone for the, the, the image of how you can craft it. Um, sometimes, like I said, sometimes, I may go over and, and use a preset. Typically not. I like to craft my images how I like them. So again, we'll come in. That's not to say that they're good or not good, but I like to have complete control. And I typically 13, 14, 15, it depends on the image, and somewhere 27, 28, 29, around there. It always, always, always depends on the image. And then, as a general rule, I will drop the contrast down because I know I'm going to be adjusting that specifically and exactly through the use of the mass in, within the image where I want it to be more contrasty or less contrasty, not in an overall. So I like this. We'll start here. Again, apologize. Big file. Takes time. Okay, so we start here, and we're going to make our mass again. We're going to come to all mass. This is an old fort in Boston called Fort Warren. It's an old Civil War fort. It's an amazing place. If you're ever up in this area, take a day trip, a boat ride over to it. Um, the place is filled with these caverns of enormous walls, 10, 20 feet thick, and it's just Beautiful to photograph. Um, you have this this terrific light there. You have to come up to my way. So, what we want to work on first, we see that it's a little hot here and a little hot here and maybe a little bit hot here. So I'm going to work on the lights and what, which one do I want to check or select to use it that's going to affect just where I want. Now, since these are self feathering, um, it always has a little bit of bleed over. So into the other. Uh, mask. So I always pick one that's a little bit more constrained than the others. So you would think this would be the right one, but I'm going to pick one that's a little bit more constrained. So I'm going to pick bright lights. And again, we'll go right to the curves, my number one favorite. We'll make some adjustments. And it will be constrained by this mask. And as you can see, very, very subtle changes. If you look here, while I'm making these changes in that very bright area, if I go the opposite direction, you can see it. And if I come down, you can see a very subtle, subtle change. Not overboard at all. But yet, if you come over to the mask and shift click on the mask, that's the adjustment I would have made without a mask. It's pretty significant. Um, and, and having this type of pinpoint control without the luminosity mask is impossible, absolutely impossible. So we'll work on the darks a little bit next, and we'll see, we'll start with the darks, nope, dark darks, shadow darks, we'll come in there, super darks, and ultra darks. 
So I want to open this up and through here. So we're going to pick ultra darks. Let this create the mask with the curves adjustment layer attached to it. Double click on it and we're going to open those shadows up just a little. As you can see down here as I adjust it, it's opening up just a hair. But where I want it, and again we'll go back to the midtones. This seems to be my fallback all the time, the basic midtones, because it seems to be the right one for most of the images that I shoot. And we'll go back, basic midtones. Then we're going to add a little bit of contrast in this, and again with just a, an S curve. I hope everybody's familiar with curves in uh, what they can do for you. Curves are your friend. I like this look about here. So now we're going to play. We're going to um, introduce something very new within Tony's actions, and then we'll go back into uh, Topaz again. So one last thing here, we're going to go into the triple play. And on the lights adjustments, and these are all done with um, blending modes, either screen or multiply. So you'll have multiply, which we, as everybody knows, will increase it by a stop, and screen will decrease it by a stop as far as the exposure. But when you're blending it through uh, the lights and the darks mask, you can see a very significant and very quick effect to this image. So I'm going to start with about a 10 pixel blur Gaussian blur. What this does is puts the Gaussian blur right to the mask itself. And if you're familiar with Photoshop and Gaussian blur, you know that it's used in almost everything. Unsharp mask, every every aspect of Photoshop is affected with the Gaussian blur. And we're going to make the darks about a 20 pixel. And again, we're using it in curves. All right, so what we'll show you here is just by, after this is all finished being created, we're going to just literally work on the lights first. And by pushing the button, you'll see subtle effects. And then if it gets too much, we can mitigate that effect by selecting the layer above it or the channel above it that does not have the Gaussian blur to it to mitigate the, the adjustment and contrast. This will affect brightness, contrast, and detail. And it's very quick and very significant of the change you can make. Um, and now we're going to go up to the... Um, we will have a screen mode in the darks, and we'll pick this one, and as you know, screen uh, lightens. And it may look a little bit too bright initially, but we can mitigate that by selecting over here, and you can see the difference. Now I've added some detail, some contrast, and some adjustment to the brightness. I like what I see here. So now I'm going to stamp it again. Control Shift, Control, Shift, Alt, E. We're not done with this image by any stretch. We're going to come into clarity here. And then we're going to use a little bit of dodge and burn to highlight areas that I want to have the eye focused on. It'll be here and here and here. And we'll tone this down a little bit too. And I'm going to add a little bit of saturation painting in here. As I recall, these bricks will very uh, red. So we'll come into Topaz Labs and we're going to come into Clarity. Very quick. Once it's complete, we'll reset. All right, now we want to pick the look that we like here. Um, one would think a little bit in the architecture because I want to bring out a little bit of those bricks since it is a brick building. And which one do I want? Interior strong. I like this. 
but I'm going to tone this opacity down just a bit. It's a little heavy for me. Uh, we're going to adjust the black levels just a little too. As you can see, if you go to this direction, it makes it very black, and this direction it makes it a little bit lighter. So we're going to adjust this a little bit. And the contrast, if I go this direction, you can see what happens. And go this direction, you can see what happens. It makes it a little too hot. So I want this a little bit less contrasty. And I like this look. So we'll press OK. wait for this to finish and then we're going to make a little bit adjustments with burn dodge layers and we're going to make a little bit of an adjustment with saturation painting. So as we wait for this to come up and she's ready to go so we'll come back into Tony's actions and we will create a burn dodge and these are pretty much my go-to's burn dodge and saturation and uh, for sure, the, the masking and the uh, uh, when it calls for it, the triple play. Um, pretty much regular, and my go-tos with to uh, topaz are always adjust black and white. Obviously, if it's a, it's a black and white image, I love lens effects, what it does and what it can do for your film or your images. I date myself with film. Um, I use all of them, but those are my go-tos and and detail as well. So we're going to dodge this a little bit. Um, right in through here, just a hair. So we'll come into Dodge, it should be on Overlay. And we're going to adjust this brush down just a little bit. Click. Just a little bit. So I want this area here just a little bit on the Dodge, it's about 10% opacity. We'll open this up a little bit, open some of those shadows down there. Just a little. And then here as well, just a little. And here, just as a little, a little bit of that shadow out of there. Right now, we're going to burn. Now we'll fix this a little bit, a little bit lighter. You can see the light streaks coming through here. Make this smaller, and coming through here to emphasize. Draw your eye in, and a little bit larger. I want this your eye to come right to it. Have that light path come right to, to the pedestal here. Now we'll go back into burn. Black. We'll burn up here just a little and just a little through here. Using these techniques, you can draw your eye right to where it needs to be instead of doing it on a global basis. Pretty sure everybody's familiar with how to create a, a, a dodge burn layer. It's just a 50% gray uh, layer. Create a new layer and fill it with 50% gray, and then you can burn through it uh, with the use of the uh, paintbrush. It's pretty standard uh, Photoshop. So I like what we see here. So the last technique will be a saturation painting. Again, it creates an empty layer if the uh, blend mode is saturation. And we're just going to bring this a little bit here, a little bit, and emphasize this red. Just a little. If you go too much, go with the gray. And I think we're done with this image. All right. Well, first off, thank you again. This has been very interesting, and I would like to thank Tony Kuiper as well for um, kind of co-promoting this session. I just want to say thank you again, Joe. This has been great. Really appreciate I, you coming. I had a blast. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye now.